This video is sponsored by Tisby Custom Software Solutions. Call the number on your screen and use the keyword out of here for a $1,000 credit toward your next Tisby project. The Arizona Diamondbacks have been one of the most interesting teams in baseball in recent years. Just look at their win-loss records since 2014. There's a lot to unpack here. After finishing with the worst record in baseball, their win total went plus 15, minus 10, plus 24, minus 11, and then plus 3. That's quite the roller coaster from year to year, but funny enough, we're going to be focusing on that plus 3 from 2019 and why the D-backs are in better shape now than they were just a few seasons prior. My name is Bobby, and welcome back to Stat Stories. Shout out to all those who wanted a D-backs video, there were a lot of you. While we're going to be focusing on the 2019 D-backs, we do need to talk about the years prior for some context. Like I said, they had the worst record in baseball in 2014, and as a result, Dave Stewart and Chip Hale were brought in as general manager and manager respectively after the season. The team improved a lot the next year thanks to healthy and productive seasons from Paul Goldschmidt, David Peralta, and AJ Pollock, but the young pitching staff, while promising, lacked a certifiable ace. So that offseason, the D-backs splashed some major cash on Zach Greinke in the form of a six-year, $206.5 million contract. But they didn't stop there, because the very next day, the Diamondbacks would pull off one of the worst trades in recent memory. They would acquire 2015 All-Star pitcher Shelby Miller and minor leaguer Gabe Spire in exchange for outfielder Ender Inciarte, top 100 prospect Aaron Blair, and the number one pick from that year's draft, shortstop Dansby Swanson. Now going out and trading for another strong starting pitcher wasn't the issue here, but how much they gave up to get him had people labeling this a lopsided trade from the moment it happened. Not only do you give up two of your top prospects, but you trade away a young starting outfielder with top-notch defense, one that would win a Gold Glove Award each of the next three seasons. But anyway, the aggressive moves made that offseason backfired and the pitching staff allowed the most runs in the majors. As a result, Stewart and Hale were fired from their management positions, and Mike Hazen and Tori Lovello were brought in as their replacements inheriting a team that had lost 93 games and had one of the worst minor league systems in the league. Expectations were low for the D-backs and their pitching staff, so of course, they would be one of the best teams in baseball in 2017. Their pitching staff had the second best ERA in the National League, and it was largely comprised of returning players who performed way better than they had the previous season. They even managed to grab a wildcard spot for the postseason, and they won that game, but they would lose in the next round to the Dodgers. So after their strong season, the D-backs were looking to be competitive once more in 2018. But their great pitching was combined with a subpar offense this time around, and the team was left to face the sad reality of free agency. Patrick Corbin and AJ Pollock would move on to new teams, and the face of the franchise Paul Goldschmidt had just one year left on his contract. So he was traded to the St. Louis Cardinals for a pretty good haul of talent. Trading away your best player is usually a sign that a team is about to undergo a rebuild, but no other key players were traded that offseason. The Diamondbacks would just head into the 2019 season with rookies and players with little major league experience filling in the holes left in the team. In true Diamondbacks fashion, the team would surpass their low expectations by winning three more games than they did the previous season. I know that's not much of a difference, but this team was relying on young and or unproven players to replace their departed stars. Paul Goldschmidt, he was replaced by a 28-year-old who was technically in his rookie season despite debuting back in 2014. AJ Pollock, a middle infielder with minimal experience in the outfield, took his spot. And Patrick Corbin, the Diamondbacks used several pitchers with little MLB experience in the rotation in 2019, but Alex Young and Luke Weaver were two of the standouts. An interesting note on the Diamondbacks season is that they had a losing record on July 31st, aka the trade deadline. Zach Greinke was sent to the Astros for a bunch of prospects that day, and the team had a better record without their rotation ace. Let's take a closer look at a few of the team's top performers. Acquired in the Goldschmidt trade, Carson Kelly was a huge improvement at catcher, especially offensively. With Alex Avila and John Ryan Murphy returning from the 2018 team, Kelly was essentially replacing defensive specialist Jeff Mathis. While he's not quite an elite defensive catcher, the drastic difference in offensive production between the two showcases his value. 2018 trade acquisition Eduardo Escobar was a nice surprise at the plate two years ago, collecting 74 extra base hits. 
In 2019, he would finish with the same exact number, including a league-leading 10 triples. The third baseman primarily batted third for the D-backs, and is currently signed to a very manageable contract. But the biggest part of the D-backs' success was a trade acquisition from 2017, Cattell Marte. Playing center field and second base, Marte had a huge power surge that I explored in a previous video, and he wound up finishing fourth in the NL MVP vote. He's also on a very friendly contract, and if Arizona picks up their club options on him, Marte won't be a free agent until after the 2024 season. Now, there are other players worthy of a mention, such as 28-year-old rookie Christian Walker and his 29 home runs, Gold Glove shortstop Nick Ahmed, who continues to improve offensively, 30-year-old rookie pitcher Merrill Kelly, and the fastest man in baseball, Tim LaCastro. But the player we really need to talk about is Zach Gallen. The rookie starting pitcher was great across seven starts for the Marlins, and after being acquired by the D-backs on the trade deadline, he performed just as well, even improving his strikeout and walk rates. The player he was traded for was highly touted shortstop prospect Jazz Chisholm, and the reason this trade is significant is because it represents something the Diamondbacks hadn't done since prior to 2016, and that is trade a top prospect. Remember how I said Mike Hazen inherited one of the worst farm systems in baseball when he took over as GM? Well, three years later, the Diamondbacks have one of the best. They currently have five players in the MLB.com Top 100 Prospects list in Christian Robinson, Alec Thomas, Dalton Varsho, Geraldo Perdomo, and Corbin Carroll. They also have a lot of depth outside of this group, thanks to the Zach Greinke trade and a huge 2019 draft class. The Diamondbacks had seven of the first 75 picks in the 2019 draft, including picks that they acquired from losing Corbin and Pollock in free agency, failing to sign their 2018 first round pick, and receiving a pick in the Paul Goldschmidt trade. They used these picks to get a well-balanced group of players with three college pitchers, two high school pitchers, one college outfielder, and one high school outfielder. Baseball is not like other professional sports drafts where you can acquire players who could impact the team immediately, so we'll have to wait a few years to see if these picks pan out. But for now, these picks help put the Diamondbacks in a great competitive position. They can afford to keep hold of some prospects while also trading some to help the big league roster right now, which they already did when trading 2019 draft pick Brennan Malone for outfielder Starling Marte this offseason. One thing to keep in mind is that most of the Diamondbacks' top prospects are still a few years away from impacting the Major League team, so it's difficult to say who will stick around as part of the team's core. Financially, the D-backs have their money spread out to more players on smaller salaries, as opposed to a few large contracts like they would have had if Corbin, Pollock, Goldschmidt, and Greinke were still on the team. As a result, the Arizona Diamondbacks are a much more balanced team, rebuilt in a way that sets them up for long-term success. And if your business is looking for long-term success, Tisby specializes in solving complex business problems with smart, well-designed software solutions. By providing its technical expertise, Tisby's goal is to help businesses reach their full potential by focusing on database-driven solutions, enterprise information systems, and mobile application systems. Tisby's team has broad expertise in solving artificial intelligence and deep learning problems as they apply to business tasks. So if you're a business looking for your permanent technology partner for your digital transformation, call the number on your screen and mention the keyword out of here for a $1,000 credit toward your next Tisby project. And visit www.tisby.com for more information. Thank you to Tisby for sponsoring this video and thank you all for watching. Be sure to give it a like and share it with your friends and click that subscribe button to help the channel grow. Leave your video suggestions in the comments. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next video.